what's up we're in the next part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings um yeah in the previous part i basically sang a whole bunch of music lamenting against insistent men trying to bash the door in to the life of a woman that will literally never ever accommodate them um i sang michael jackson's hold me uh king will you be there will you be there i sang michael jackson's will you be there my version uh i sang adele's make you feel my love my version i sang easy uh, don't you remember adele too my version and easy on me my version and all those songs were basically to uh, allude to this epidemic that's going on in the last days of some pretty random men uh that try to slide into the dms of women try to slide into the lives of weak-willed women seeking to burden them with passions it's a last days epidemic it's a concern of the last days do you understand what i'm saying where it is that men are not going to take no for an answer and they are going to be using sorcery a whole bunch of it to force women to be with them even though they don't want to be with them in the order, these men will have been given opportunities upon 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 opportunities to do better in the past and then they will have chosen not to and then they would want to come in and mire the garments of godly women and ungodly women however the godly women will prosper to uh, basically evade them elude them they will escape there will be greece man Pete, but ungodly women will get taken away by the tsunami of it it is a problem in the last days it's an epidemic in the last days where it is that there are some pretty evil nefarious no-brainer men that are going to be exploiting women so women need to be super on guard in these last days because of these guys and i am literally incinerated by them almost daily i spoke in my first um video about how it is that god gave me a vision of me being like a porcupine in the middle of some lions that cannot consume me because my spikes are out my spikes are out but they keep on hovering around me they stand outside of my ministry and they just want to pounce like the roaring lion devouring seeking whomever he may devour this rando dude adversary the devil so i am i'm doing everything in my power to help people understand that we are at the very end it's the very last days it's the literal end of the very end of the end i'm a total queen now because i'm a royal priesthood and a holy nation end of the end of the end of the end of the road we are there and how pursued by wicked men i am it's just yet another sign of the last days and i'm gonna prove that to you in second timothy 3. let us read uh second timothy 3 together it goes a little something like this one two three go but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to parents to their parents ungrateful unholy heartless does that ring a bell heartless unappeasable slanderous without self-control brutal not loving good treacherous reckless swollen with conceit so self-conserved and self-adored with no regard for other people swollen with conceit lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god these uh, let me just read all of second timothy 3 and then i will get into this right lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having the appearance of godliness but denying its power avoid such people for among them are those who listen to this imperative for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions always learning and never coming to a knowledge of truth and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth just as janus and jambres opposed moses so these men also oppose the truth men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith disqualified regarding the faith listen to that but they will not get very far for their folly will be plain to all as was of those two men that's second timothy 3 describing the moral turpitude of the last days and what in the world is going to be going on all right i want to get into certain portions of second timothy 3 to help you understand how these men are going to be they're going to be abusive arrogant proud unholy heartless no matter how much gospel you give them no matter how much you try to salvage them snatch them out from the flames of hell they will also be unappeasable they will be full of slander they will lack self-control like a city without walls so too is a man without self-control like a bear robbed of its cubs so too is a man without self-control they will be without self-control they will be brutal do you not imagine that it is brutal to perform a hegelian dialectic on a woman essentially what that would be a, Hege a hegelian dialectic is the act of or it is a concept explaining the behavior of a powerful body creating chaos on the ground that it might rock up and offer a solution to that calamity these men walk in a hegelian dialectic in the sense that 
they can literally use witchcraft to cause so much disaster in the life of a woman that he would be the only prince charming rocking up to save the day. I've been lamenting about this on a loop and I say I speak about it almost in every video that I do that I am not going to be the hostage of a satanic man. You know that song, yeah, Jennifer um, Hudson. Hey, I don't want living under your spotlight just because you think I might find somebody worthy. Ooh, yeah, that song keeps on going off on a loop perpetually in my head because these men are like that. If at all you end up with one, you will be living under his spotlight just because he scared you might find somebody worthy and uh, among the lyrics uh, also she says maybe if you treat me right you won't have to worry in other words if they repented they wouldn't have to worry about their shoddy behavior but they don't want to because they're brutal they're abusive they are unappeasable they lack self-control they don't love good they're treacherous they're reckless they're swollen with conceit it is a self-adoration that is so poignant that they cannot, for the life of them, for the sake of his wife, do better. Love her the way that Christ loved the church. No, it's not about mm, you. It's about me. It's about how much I want to be pleased and satiated in my desires for you. But because they, their character is so fallen, they know, therefore, in that insecurity, that you could actually find somebody worthy. So, you live under their spotlight. They literally control you ascertaining that you can't move left or right lest you should find somebody worthy mm. that, that's exactly what goes on so as a woman you need to basically just let that be your, your anthem Pina Ele, yeah, Jennifer Huston in the last days I don't want to live under your spotlight just because you think I might find somebody worthy if you treat me right maybe you won't have to worry don't even be with them recognize that you've you, you've just met a man that's shining a spotlight on you surveilling the living daylights out of you ascertaining that you don't move left or right because he knows that he will not build his character and because he will not build it because he will not turn to christ because he will not truly love the lord because he will not correct his ways he will then make out of you a puppet on a string a marionette under witchcraft spells who in the world is going to protect you from that but jesus just because you think I might find somebody worthy. Don't do it, right? Okay, cool. So they don't love good. They are treacherous, reckless. They are reckless. If you look at their rap sheet, you'll find out that they've got like four different baby mamas. The dude from America, in the same year that I met him, contracted HIV. Because he was out just sleeping around all over the show without condoms. Fornication was the first and foremost issue. Over and above fornication, with it too, was he also reckless. And now he wants to rock up a little tea a cool, and grab a woman with a clean bill of health that hasn't even had sex in 13 years. And he imagined that he can use witchcraft to achieve that goal. My ex boyfriend, he wants to come back into my life. He went and married some other woman. He was reckless with my name. He knew he was still in love with me and reviled the living delights out of me in front of his uh, family. During the time when I was busy considering the things of God, he refused to heed them. If he had cleansed himself, he might have actually prospered to come back successfully into my life. But he hated God. He was reckless. And now being swollen with conceit, he's trying to break the hearts of two women, me and his wife. Just because you think I might find somebody worthy. I did. I found Jesus. Unfortunately, the woman that he did end up with, she's the one that's taken by a man who worms their way into the lives of weak women seeking burdened with passions and various sins. And now she's miserable with a man that is unstable, like an atom on the spot vibrating. He's entirely unstable in that marriage. And she is frustrated by it, but there's nothing she can do because, you know, when you accommodate a man like this, you will be a sorrowful sight for sore eyes as a woman. You will be a sorrowful sight for sore eyes, do you understand, as a woman. Just because you think I might find somebody worthy, find Jesus and he will enable you to be maintained in your, you know, sobriety. Mm. Without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit. And herein lies another kicker. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They love pleasure. In other words, they see you, they think you're pretty. They see your body and they imagine, whoa, what could I do with that in the bedroom? They fetishize your purity as a godly woman. 
they fetishize your body even as an ungodly woman it's about pleasuring their taste buds it's about i want to be happy i want to be happy i want to have fun i want a woman that's vivacious a woman that's going to sing to me as i sleep at night a woman that i can cuddle with like it's all about their senses their senses it's about what they can smell taste it's about what they can touch hear, and see it's about their senses it is not about denying the flesh taking up the cross and following christ they have no sense of self-denial they just want to eat 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 drink 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 defecate 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 anything at all that can titivate their taste buds whatever can pleasure their senses they're running with it at the expense of their own godliness their carnal and also of course in so being the way that they are they then are also being at the expense of women too they are causes of sin it's written in god's word that offenses will come on the earth but woe to the man through whom those offenses come these men cause women to sin they cause women to abandon their vows of chastity they keep on experimenting with godly women who say that i'm i'm chaste i'm celibate i'm waiting on the lord for a husband and they will flirt with them they will keep on petting their necks kissing them hugging them spending time alone with them burdening them with passions like it's written with Janice and Jambres until this chick albeit having been celibate for five years albeit having been celibate for seven years albeit have been having been celibate for two years you get my point with me personally it's been 13 years he will burden you with so much lust that you might end up having sex with him because he will little by little incrementally very perniciously stealthily get you to a point of ultimately laying with him the dude in America he was all the way far away but I was so burdened with passions during the time that I was with him and I kept on saying stop stop speaking like that to me because you are stumbling me and he just wouldn't he would tell me what he wanted to do with my body he spoke about sex all the time all the time even going into a description of what he would do to me and I would tell him stop you're stumbling me and this was over video call it was over video call do you understand what I'm saying while he was sitting all the way in California while I am here in South Africa that's the only thing that say, that rescued me essentially from ultimately ending up fornicating because I told him to stop a whole bunch of times until I stopped telling him to stop. I just listened to it. I took it in because I allowed myself to fall under that lust. The dude from South Africa, there's a guy in, in this country when I was working at MTN that also was like that. And then I hey, where's the king? It's written in God's word that nobody can bring fire to their pants and not expect to burn to their crotch area and expect not to burn. Yeah. Yeah. I was out here bringing fire to my pants and I expected not to burn. I nearly fornicated with that guy. We were so like I I had I, I had a, a whole pledge of vow that I had said to myself that I don't even want to kiss before we get married before I'm married. Like I, I was so celibate and so chaste that I wanted not even to kiss. All we were gonna do is hold hands, maybe hug, and there was always gonna be a chaperone, according to me. Yeah, no, this guy literally lured me into his apartment. He lured me in. He lured me in. We would then spend a whole bunch of time together. Next thing we're sitting right next to each other, warm bodies. Next thing we're kissing, making out. So my little vow to not kiss gone out the window. Just like that. And it got hot and heavy and heated. And there was a day when we nearly had sex. It didn't happen because of him, frankly. He's the one that was like, uh, no, let's stop. If, if I had allowed him, he was going to go on right ahead and finish what he started. That dude, it would later come to be um evidenced that he was also into sorcery one of those one foot in the world one foot in christ so whatever little conviction he had in jesus christ and whatever it is that he imagined that he found in me as a gem made him stop us from having sex when i was gonna go all the way through with it and there was not even any protection involved so i was just gonna risk my life just like that that's what's good because that's maybe he's his bill of health and that was me that was two years into my celibacy two years into my faith it didn't happen because of him and i'm grateful and i'm grateful because he was carnal he was lost he wasn't even saved but he had some conviction of sin enough to be the one to put that like yeah stop the whole thing from happening he was the one like i however was lured into his apartment by him he was the one that encroached on me that hugged me that kissed me that came all up in my neck and breathed heavy down my down my soul until ultimately i just i couldn't take it i was literally swimming in lust and I, I, I fainted under it. And thankfully, he's the one that even though he brought me into that space of drunkardness, that said enough booze for the day. If that relationship had continued, if it had lingered for any longer than what it was, I would have probably fornicated with that guy. Thank God he offended me. He insulted me. The Lord insulted, caused him to insult me. And I broke up with him because I was I couldn't believe what he said to me. He told me that, 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 that <laughs> he must be shooting himself in the foot today. Like, yeah, he must be 
hitting himself on the head on some I, if I, that's the thing that caused Karamo to get out like all these other red flags Azang Wahama because of them she left because of that one statement <laughs> anyway whatever <laughs> <laughs> but that that that's a person that is a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of god having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof they they they, they just want to titivate their taste buds they ignore your uh boundaries whatever boundaries you have like the dude from america i kept on telling him stop speaking like that to me you're stumbling me and he was like yeah all right all right all right and then and like 25 minutes later he's at it again no respect for boundaries lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god they're like ones who are walking in satisfiers instead of hygiene factors like they, they 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 don't concentrate on godliness on purity on piety i don't want to explain what hygiene factors are okay let me briefly just get into it like a hygiene factor think about the hotel or the hospitality industry if at all you go to a hotel and there are like there are no there's no toilet paper and there's like condoms on the in the sheets when you open the the the, the blankets and uh, like the walls are um, you, there's like some stains there that, that you don't understand and uh they, there's like yeah they, those are things that if at all that was a, a, a the status quo in a hotel room that you went to you would probably you would leave it, it would be unacceptable you wouldn't sleep in that bed you wouldn't stay that night you would absolutely leave and report them to radio stations and hello p time everywhere all over the show that gross this hotel i found condoms in the in the sheets it's a it, that those are hygiene factors ba basic things that are needed satisfiers on the other hand are if at all you go to a hotel and everything is there for you cool toilet papers there the sheets are clean the walls are clean everything is neat yeah and then they make a decision because it's your honeymoon to put petals on the bed like rose petals to say congratulations on your big day that's a satisfier like if you walked into that hotel room and they weren't there you, weren't, you wouldn't miss them. You wouldn't be like, but why didn't they go the extra mile? Why didn't they do that for us? Why didn't they, you know, hook up an ambiance with candles on the room because of our wedding night? Uh, yeah, because this is like, you know, a honeymoon night type thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, you wouldn't miss it if it was not there. But when it's there, you you feel like, oh, this is so sweet. Look, they did this for us. They brought, look at the box of chocolates. Oh, look at the flowers. Yeah, you feel impressed by the extra mile. But if it was not there, you would not miss it to a point of reporting it or something. But why didn't you go out like that? However, if you were to go into that same hotel room and there's it's your honeymoon night, you get there with your husband and there's like petals on the uh, bed, there's a, an ambient temperature, uh, you know, created by candles and like some tranquil music all up in this grill. However, when you go to the toilet, it's not flushed. There's no toilet paper and there's period blood on the sheets. It's like, yo, it does not matter how many satisfiers are there. It does not matter that there's petals on the bed, that there's ambient music, that there's this and that, that they've gone out of their way, that they have even like, you know, given you your favorite box of chocolates belgian chocolates or whatever it does not matter because i am not staying here ew i am not staying here it's not clean it's not a proper hotel you would leave so what i'm trying to get at is that satisfiers without hygiene factors are worthless satisfiers without hygiene factors are worthless satisfiers on their own are worthless hygiene factors alone are sufficient and you don't need satisfiers satisfiers are the extra mile they are thank you cherry on top but they're not the cake absent of them you wouldn't live However, absent of hygiene factors, you can't live. Well, having used the example of the hospitality industry, understand that in this particular case with Christianity, with God, with uh, uh, your walk with him, true consecration, bearing fruit, being cleansed, having been cured from sin and being sanctified is a hygiene factor. True godliness is a hygiene factor. Self-control is a hygiene factor. Bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit is a bare minimum in a christian and that's what a woman should be looking for in a man and vice versa and if these things are absent it doesn't matter how many flowers he can buy you or how many chocolates he can buy you how many trips overseas he can take you to how many you get my point it does not matter that he can buy you an apartment he it does not matter that he is cute really good looking that he is well built he looks really great those are satisfiers those are things that as a christian woman when you meet a godly man that is super consecrated he loves the lord he is all super duper califragile, expelliodocious, evangelistic. Like he can't help but speak about Jesus from his belly. Flows rivers of living water. And then, oh my goodness, like over and above it. He looks like Brad Pitt. Over and above it. He's cleanly shaven. All over and above it. He He's well dressed. He smells good. His cologne is excellent. He, over and above it. He's got a beautiful apartment over and above it. He's well built. He's got a six pack over and above it. He is super romantic. He is wealthy. He can take you on trips overseas. Those are satisfiers. Absent of satisfiers. If this godly man 
wasn't rich, if this godly man, um, just, you know, every so often puts on some tracksuit pants and some sneakers and a, a, a t-shirt and he's clean, you know, he, he smells like soap, but he doesn't go out of his way to wear cologne. Yeah, you wouldn't miss them if at all you're truly godly. You wouldn't insist or be pedantic that your man be this alpha male that has got like literally everything ticked off type thing. Like godliness is so precious that when satisfiers are not there, you'll work on that. Over time, you'll teach a man to buy a wallet instead of just, you know, stuffing his cash in like a, a shirt pocket and that's it over time you'll 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 you know basically upgrade the partner and let me upgrade you well, over time you let him know that but babe you know maybe a little bit of cologne it, you know it wouldn't hurt some aftershave wouldn't hurt your scruffy beard it wouldn't hurt to get rid of it when he's like super duper godly that that's what a helper suitable does when a woman comes into, the, into a man's life he gets sort of kind of transformed sometimes, you know, influenced positively into the right direction. But when his godliness is there, like I said, you'll work on satisfiers later. You will work on satisfiers. But if the satisfiers are, 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 are there, absent of hygiene factors, you've got money. You've got the aftershave. You've got the Armani or the Bulgari cologne. I don't care when you're ungodly. When you are misogynistic, when you are chauvinist, when you haven't had your character chiseled, when the Lord has not worked in you, when you have not been sanctified, when uh, when you're a player, when, when you've got like three baby mamas out in these three, some of whom are always complaining about child maintenance, when your character leaves a lot to be desired, it doesn't matter what you can do for a poor woman struggling. If she is godly, she will consider your satisfiers disgusting in a hotel room whose toilet is not flushed, disgusting in a hotel room who whose bed sheets have got period stains and condoms in there like it doesn't matter like she recognizes that you are filthy your hygiene factors are not intact but you've got satisfies you've got money for days that you can use to cause her basically you can splurge over her you can take a shop on shopping sprees women in the world unfortunately have not been trained to disregard satisfiers absent of hygiene factors but in christ the hygiene factor is so important that a an ungodly man will be confused as to why you settled what he calls a settling for a simple dude with just a one bedroom apartment out just struggling you know every so often you know putting things together that is a truck driver and you're in love like no man's yeah but when you look at that man he is so consecrated to god he is so incredibly worthy in the sight of god to love you as christ loved the church and he gets it he doesn't get abashed in public when you speak about christ he in and of himself is not afraid to stand on a street corner and evangelize and tell some people about Jesus while somebody about Jesus while somebody's out here kicking the crate underneath his feet. A man that is a missionary, and so he doesn't have a nine to five job that's going to make him smell like Armani all day. Wear a Hugo, Hugo Boss suit. He's always in like old sneakers, and some like I said, he's clean, like he smells like soap, but not cologne. A man like that, worldly men will be confused when you settle for him as a Christian woman. They they won't get it. They will not get it. They just will not get it because the things of God are like foolishness to the man who is perishing. They just won't understand. And when women get saved in Christ, such things as these happen. And then like their exes are to try to flash them, flash them like a naked man in the park, flashing some children underneath a trench coat where there's nothing else underneath. Mm. Flash some people in the park with all of their things that go glitter that aren't really always gold. Yeah. And this woman, upon her being unfazed by all the flashes, of this dude's nakedness when she's unfazed by it that's when they go to the, like witchcraft they sabotage they try to kill a man they mess with the marriage it's like dude my husband is not even as rich as you my husband does not have the, the walk-in closet that you have he does not have like all these suits he does not have the clout the tenders the money but he is godly and the two of us are working for with jesus for jesus together they don't get it and so they will harass the living dealers out of those relationships and that's what is going on in these last days a lot of abuse of godly couples by worldly folk who are trying to get them to look at me look at me look at me shining their satisfiers while hygiene factors are comprehensively absent comprehensively absent so the lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god essentially what that would equate to in this analogy of hygiene factors and satisfiers that i'm using is they are lovers of satisfiers but not lovers of hygiene factors they are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god they love satisfiers but not hygiene factors they're ungodly but they've got much they're ungodly they titivate taste buds it's all about their six their five senses sorry it is about what they can taste see smell hear you get my touch it's about salivating after that which is going to make you feel better they can never self-deny they will burden you with passions therefore because they can't wait for sex after marriage, even mind sex, 
basically talking dirty, talking about sex, can stumble a person. That dude in America was far away, but he was out here having mental sex with me. He was always just vocalizing the things he would do to me. According to God, when you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with the heart. If you're not gouging out your eye, cutting off your hand, like forget it. You are not with self-control. You are allowing yourself to fall into heinous acts. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that dude was like that. That dude from America was like that. He was stumbling me. If he was in this country, yes, like if he was around. I even told him that I don't want to kiss before marriage. He looked like on some, oh goodness, whoa, you're one of those. Like he literally gave me that look. I could see his face on the Facebook um, video calling uh, type establishment thing. So, I mean, if at all he landed in South Africa, he would have probably groped me at a first meeting. Groped my, my bum groped my breasts because it's not like we're having sex we're just touching whoa no regard for boundaries a man that is a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of god god if he loved god he would recognize that the lord is not pleased with this behavior do everything in your power to protect a woman from herself protect her even from falling underneath the pheromones of all of your love juice protect her from fornicating with you you are the spiritual leader in this relationship as a man. But like, if you cannot lead her spiritually, you are not fit for purpose to be her husband. Even in the slightest. She cannot be pulling in all the time. She cannot be pulling all the weight. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Mm, that's what's good. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's what they are. They love pleasure. They just think about sex all the time. And they're willing to wait for you to have sex after marriage. If at all, that's what you say. But again, if you are content to do it just before the day of your um, sealing of marital vows... He's not going to complain. He's just willing to wait until after you're married. But he, he is in and of himself not convicted strongly of sexual sin. Enough to actively barricade against falling into sexual sin himself. He's just willing since that's your insistence. That's not a man that's got conviction of sexual sin. That's a man that wants a woman strongly enough to stay his body from having hers until they're married. The guy in America was willing to wait until after marriage. But in and of himself, he had no conviction of sexual sin at all at all settling lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god yeah the next part says that they have a form uh, okay rather than lovers of god having the appearance of godliness but denying its power the power to be what do you call this the power to be uh sanctified i will put in you a clean heart and you will be clean i will sprinkle clean water on you sorry and you will be clean the lord will remove the heart of flesh put in the heart of stone sorry and put in the heart of flesh the lord sanctifies that is the power of God unto salvation. That is the power of God to help you overcome your slavery to sin. So when you are a, um, when, when you've got a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof, you deny the power of God to give you spiritual conviction of, like I said, sexual sin, spiritual conviction of all manner and kinds of grotesque uh, atrocities that human, humanity can walk in. When, when a person's life is not transformed by redemption, they don't really have God. They have a form of godliness you are professing, you know? Jesus has Lord, Jesus has Lord. You are just merely speaking of Christ being king, but really is he to you? Is he really Lord? No. He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, but is he your Lord? It appears that the God of this world is still your God because you are partaking in, for in sorcery. You are also partaking in fornication. That dude was both a sorcerer and a fornicator and an, um, uh, just a myriad of other things that he was. Uh, one time when I was speaking with him, because he was, uh, he used to snub me a lot whenever I spoke, like just, you know, uh, just a, a harsh way of speaking uh, to me. And one time I saw his lips moving because like I said, it was FaceTime. Uh, it wasn't FaceTime, it was Facebook uh, video call. Yeah, I, I, I was speaking to basically just gain clarity on something you were saying. And he was like, I'm still speaking. And then after he said that vocally, he then literally gestured his mouth without vocalizing it like you know yeah basically moving his mouth so as to show me what his thought was and he said the f word he didn't say it in so many words but he said he he basically used his mouth to gesture the f word and i saw it coming out of him his speech was not seasoned with salt he was still very profane and oh mind you because this dude was always just talking about sex with me and there came a time when i ultimately accommodated it and i did not uh, tell him to stop because he's stumbling me one time he went he literally go went so far as to say that he can't wait to f me <laughs> what the heck was i doing with that guy like what in the world was i doing with that guy he said that he can't wait to fornicate with me but using that the very crass terminology of the planet yeah and i was still with him the next day yo guys you know, when, when Muntu was settling hard, I was being ravazad by settle, settlums, settlums, like the settlers that came and chilled and created colonies in, in other continents. 
I was a settler. Yeah, anyway, thank God I got rescued from that settling. A man that was profane, a lover of pleasure rather than a lover of God, and he had a form of godliness, however, denied the power thereof. He denied the power of God to transform his speech to be seasoned with salt and not be profane and not have unseemly talk coming out of him. He uh, he did not he denied God the you know, he denied the power of God to transform him to a point of avoiding or eradicating fornication, walking away from sorcery, um, from dark arts, basically just the life that he was living. Like he never got transformed. He claimed to have been born again as a 15 year old kid, and yet that whole time he has fornicated and married multiple women and yeah that that was that guy's rap i could see me naked slime i was temporarily insane like i proper believe i was temporarily insane during the time of accommodating that dude i was going through a lot i was in sorrow i was in a lot of pain and when i came back to youtube he was the first person to contact me to direct message me and he made sure that nobody else will do it and now today he's busy putting boulders on top of a cemetery a grave where it is that he has put my paraphernalia in the ground that's the man that i nearly married okay that's Janice and Jambres. They work, worm their way into the lives of weak women, perhaps maybe even financially weak, which is what is going on in my life, seeking to burden them with passions. Women burdened with various sins. It nearly happened to me, and I'm actually now trying to warn you that be afraid, be very afraid, run scared. Okay, they're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and they have the appearance of godliness but deny its power, and the Bible makes it clear. No other instruction, but avoid. Avoid such people. Avoid them. Just avoid. Janice and Jambres. Uh, avoid uh, such people for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions it's a last days epidemic this hegelian dialectic they will also go out of their way to weaken the woman so they can marry her so they can be in her life be afraid be very afraid have radars alerts like signals antenna just tweet, 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 perpetually you can't afford not to be sober in these lattes and they're so coercive that even when you say no they keep going back to the drawing board i lament all the time against such men precisely because they don't take no for an answer they are rapists avoid such people um always learning never coming to a knowledge of truth so basically they're always in the bible the guy in america he was always watching content online that i watch he was always listening to Eric Stackelback. He was always listening to um, uh, Rapture videos. He was always like, he had a Facebook page where he was uploading uh, eschatological content, speaking about how we're in the last days. He was always in the scriptures. However, unfortunately, his doctrine was messed up. Uh, I, I, it makes sense that it would be messed up because in and of himself, he was always learning, never coming to a knowledge of truth. He believed that he was a Hebrew. <laughs> what was I doing there? You know, these black Hebrew Israelites, he was among them. He is, portions of his doctrine was in that stance. I knew that I didn't make sense in that space, but for some strange reason, I lingered for five seconds longer. And now today, he is literally bashing walls in, trying to come into my life, gun gun, with that kind of a rap sheet like he's the worst dude i have ever considered being with in my life and he thinks that he's going to one day prosper to be my husband always learning never coming to a knowledge, knowledge of truth always listening to some charles spurgeon the dude from the past Olewako mtn the one that um told me that that however turned out to be a little sosara but um, that dude was always listed like we're well, not even he was worse than the guy from america in that he was a reformed um christian kind of baptist in his thought he and I used to listen to Paul Washer and Stephen Lawson and his favorite pastor or preacher was Charles Spurgeon. He used to always send me sermons from some of the most wonderful Puritans that you can ever listen to the sermons of. He had read the resolutions of, Gen of Jonathan Edwards. He was Ebertum, this dude. He, that's why I accommodated him. Like he was so sound, so sound. Yet he never came to a knowledge of truth. He was always learning, but never coming to a knowledge of truth. He could sit under Paul Washer's sermons and still do witchcraft. I could not get that. We used to listen to the reformers all the time, like Puritan sermons. We would listen to them just hanging out together on a loop on YouTube. That section that is unperused, where it is that it's only got like 3,000 views, 4,000 views, because it's the, it's, a, it's, a, it's the narration, a voiceover of, of a sermon done by a, a dead saint, a, a Puritan. Yeah, we would listen to that. Just listen to such sermons as these. <laughs> and he just, he, he still used witchcraft. Okay. I couldn't get it. Like, always learning, never coming to a knowledge of truth. Always learning, never able to arrive at a knowledge of truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind, and this is what's sad. They are also disqualified according to the faith. Disqualified. So I tried, like I've been literally trying to reach them for Jesus. And they are unresponsive. What is going on there? Why are you still flatlining? 
Why are you still flatlining? Perhaps it's because you've been disqualified according to the, fa to the faith. But the folly of these men will be clear to everybody. They won't get far according to 2 Timothy 3. So I had to just get into that to help you understand Guti. We are obviously at the last days to a point where the Lord would give me that Michael Jackson song in the first part. To a point where the Lord would give me uh, all this comprehension. And that this, these men would keep on going back to the drawing board. And the most recent one that is wreaking a, a grand amount of havoc in my life is a dude from America who, like I told you guys in the first part, had did a ritual at a cemetery where he went back to actually put rocks on it now to make sure that whatever he buried in the ground that represents me does not ever come up for air again. Lover of pleasure lover, rather than lover of God. Never mind that. He is brutal, dishonest. He is proud arrogant abusive and he is unholy heartless unappeasable slanderous without self-control not loving good reckless swollen with conceit um uh, yeah lover of self lover of m pleasure lover of uh i can't really say that he's a lover of money but he's certainly proud and guys all these things that i have just described to you right now it, it is the character flow of the human race in the last days it is a common grain it's happening all over the show and they're so coercive with all of their abusiveness that they won't leave you alone until God raptures you. That's how the last days operate. So I'm not scared. I used to be. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. Thinking I can't live with all of these Corbella guys. Yeah, until the Lord showed me. Well, I mean, Garabo in 2 Timothy 3, I did say that they would be a thing. Now I'm just waiting to be reaped. I hope you've been edified. I am signing out in the name of Jesus Christ. Cranke. Peace.